Welcome to our deep dive into one of the most fascinating chapters in Britain's history, the profound transformation that occurred in lowland Britain after the Romans left in the 5th century. This period marks the beginning of early medieval England, a time of monumental change that reshaped the country's cultural and genetic landscape. Europe itself was undergoing significant shifts during this period, with the Roman Empire's rise and eventual fall marking the start of a new era. As the empire crumbled, migrations and upheavals occurred, laying the groundwork for the medieval institutions that would form the basis of the modern world. In Britain, this transformation was especially striking, as it experienced a massive cultural shift after centuries under Roman rule. From language and architecture to farming and manufacturing, almost every aspect of life changed dramatically. But one of the most intriguing questions remains, what caused this transformation? Was it the result of large-scale migrations, or was it a more gradual process of cultural integration and adaptation? In today's video, we'll explore the evidence, from archaeology to ancient DNA, and unravel the mysteries of Britain's post-Roman past. After the Romans left Britain in the early 5th century, the island was left in a state of flux. Gone were the centralized systems of governance and infrastructure that had held the region together for centuries. In their place, a new cultural identity began to emerge, heavily influenced by the regions around the North Sea. As we explore this period, one of the most noticeable changes is the shift in material culture. Archaeological finds from this era show remarkable similarities across different regions, including modern-day England, Denmark, Germany, and the Netherlands. This interconnectedness is evident in things like architecture, burial practices, and even the manufacturing of everyday items. For instance, features like sunken buildings, also known as Grubenhauser, became a common architectural style across these regions. Large cremation cemeteries, as well as intricately carved metal artifacts and animal art, also point to shared cultural practices. But while Britain shared many of these material aspects with its continental neighbors, it also maintained unique features, especially in its language and place names. Some regions held onto their Celtic or Latin heritage, as evidenced by the survival of certain names. These markers of continuity highlight how complex the cultural landscape of post-Roman Britain was, blending new influences with remnants of the past. Although there were clear similarities between Britain and its neighboring regions across the North Sea, there were also distinct differences. For instance, while artifacts like brooches and wrist clasps found in 6th and 7th century Britain bear a striking resemblance to those in southern Scandinavia, certain cultural features remained uniquely British. Place names and river names in particular provide a fascinating glimpse into this cultural retention. Many of these names retained their Celtic or Late Latin roots, showing that the Roman and Celtic past had not been entirely erased. This mosaic of influences paints a picture of a society that was at once integrating with new ideas from across the sea while also holding on to its indigenous traditions. These differences raise important questions about how cultural change actually took place during this period. Was Britain simply invaded and colonized by Germanic-speaking migrants, or did the process involve more complex layers of integration? Early written sources like those of Bede suggest that much of the local Romano-British population was replaced by incoming migrants. However, archaeological and genetic evidence complicates this narrative, suggesting that while there was indeed migration, the situation was far more nuanced than a straightforward invasion and resettlement. By examining the interplay between new influences and existing traditions, we get a clearer understanding of how Britain evolved during this transformative period. For centuries, historians and archaeologists have debated the causes and nature of the transformations that occurred in Britain following the fall of the Roman Empire. From the Renaissance onwards, the dominant theory was one of invasion and conquest, with Germanic-speaking migrants from mainland Europe displacing the native population. Early historical accounts, like those of the Venerable Bede, told stories of entire groups of Anglo-Saxons, Jutes, and Frisians arriving in Britain and establishing new settlements, effectively replacing the existing Romano-British population. But is that the full story? Recent archaeological evidence and new scientific methods like isotopic and DNA analysis are challenging these long-held assumptions. Take, for instance, the so-called problem of the Jutes. 
Bede mentions the Jutes as early settlers in Kent, but curiously, the archaeological evidence doesn't fully support this. Artifacts found in Kent often resemble those from Merovingian France and southern Germany rather than Denmark, which makes tracing the Jutes through material culture extremely difficult. Such inconsistencies have led modern archaeologists to propose alternative theories. In the 1960s, a popular theory emerged that suggested rather than large-scale migrations, what we see is the influence of small elite groups, mobile warbands imposing their culture on the local population. However, this theory too is now under scrutiny. DNA evidence, though limited, shows that the immigrants weren't always elite or wealthy, and they often lived and were buried alongside locals, complicating the idea of a purely top-down cultural change. Now, the role of migration and cultural integration is becoming clearer, thanks to breakthroughs in genetic research. Early efforts to use genetics to understand the population history of Britain had mixed success. Researchers initially looked at present-day populations, studying specific genetic markers passed down through single parental lines, such as the Y chromosome. These studies produced intriguing but often contradictory results. For instance, some studies suggested that anywhere from 50% to 100% of male lineages in eastern England were replaced by Germanic-speaking migrants during the early Middle Ages. But more recent, large-scale genome-wide studies have started to paint a more nuanced picture. By analyzing DNA from ancient skeletal remains, scientists are now able to directly investigate the genetic makeup of people who lived during the period of transformation. One groundbreaking study, for instance, analyzed the genomes of over 285 individuals from key Anglo-Saxon cemeteries across southern and eastern England. This study marked a significant leap forward in our understanding of the genetic history of early medieval Britain. By comparing the ancient DNA to that of modern populations, as well as other ancient peoples from across Europe, the researchers were able to uncover clear evidence of migration from the continent, but they also found signs of significant continuity with the local Romano-British population. This research challenges the traditional narrative of mass displacement and suggests that migration was just one part of a much larger, more complex process of cultural integration. In one of the largest and most comprehensive studies of its kind, scientists examined the DNA of nearly 500 ancient individuals from across northwestern Europe, including England, Ireland, Denmark, Germany, and the Netherlands. This vast dataset allowed researchers to explore how populations in the early Middle Ages moved and mixed, shedding light on the genetic and cultural dynamics of the time. The study focused on samples from key early Anglo-Saxon cemeteries in England, such as Appledown, Dover Buckland, and Hatherdean Close, which provided a timeline of the region's history between 450 and 850 CE. These skeletal remains offered invaluable insights into the lives of the people buried there, and small samples of bone or teeth were taken to extract their DNA. By using radiocarbon dating, scientists could place each sample within a specific time frame, ensuring that the genetic data corresponded accurately to the period in question. After sequencing the DNA and comparing it with thousands of other ancient and modern genomes, the researchers identified distinct patterns of ancestry. The results showed a significant influx of Northern European ancestry, particularly from areas like modern-day Germany and Denmark, into early medieval England. However, the study also revealed that this migration wasn't a one-way street. There were signs of genetic continuity, particularly in Western and Southern England, where the local Romano-British population maintained a presence. The ability to associate artifacts found with these individuals adds another layer to our understanding of how migration and culture were intertwined during this period. One of the most groundbreaking revelations of this genetic study is the significant shift in the population makeup of early medieval England. Before the early Middle Ages, the genetic profile of Britain was primarily shaped by local Western British and Irish WBI ancestry particularly from populations dating back to the Bronze and Iron Ages. However, with the arrival of migrants from continental northern Europe, CNE, this began to change dramatically. The study shows that by the early medieval period, around 76% of individuals in certain regions of England, especially in the east and southeast, carried CNE ancestry. 
This represents a substantial transformation, signaling a high degree of migration and integration with continental populations. The genetic analysis also uncovered variation in ancestry between regions and even within individual communities. While some early medieval individuals showed almost complete CNE ancestry, others had none, pointing to a diverse and mixed population. This diversity is a key finding because it challenges earlier assumptions about the Anglo-Saxon migration being a uniform or singular event. Instead, the data suggests that migration was a more gradual and complex process, with different groups arriving and mixing over several centuries. Moreover, the study identified distinct genetic links to regions across the North Sea, including Lower Saxony, the Netherlands, and Southern Scandinavia which corresponds with historical records of Anglo-Saxon, Jewish, and Frisian migrations. But it wasn't just about Northern Europe. Some individuals in Southern England displayed ancestry related to Iron Age France, suggesting a long-standing connection with Frankish regions across the Channel. These findings underscore the complexity of migration patterns during this period, revealing a multilayered process of population movement and cultural exchange. This genetic shift not only shaped the population of medieval England, but also left a lasting impact on modern British genetics, particularly in southeastern England, where traces of CNE ancestry can still be found today. One of the most compelling findings from the DNA research on early medieval Britain is the evidence of significant genetic mixing between the local Romano-British population and continental migrants. Contrary to earlier theories of total displacement, the data suggests that both groups coexisted, intermarried, and influenced each other over several centuries. The variation in genetic ancestry within specific burial sites further supports this idea. For example, in cemeteries like Hatherdean Close in Cambridgeshire, the average Northern European ancestry was about 70%, but some individuals showed no continental ancestry at all while others were almost entirely of continental origin. This genetic diversity points to a complex, multi-generational process of cultural and genetic integration rather than a sudden and complete takeover by foreign migrants. Interestingly, the study also found a link between ancestry and burial practices. Individuals with higher continental Northern European, CNE, ancestry were more likely to be buried with grave goods, such as brooches, wrist clasps, and other artifacts, a practice often associated with higher social status. This was especially true for women, who were more likely to be found with elaborate jewelry. However, this pattern was not consistent across all burial sites, suggesting that local traditions and the degree of integration varied from region to region. Some burials, such as those at Oakington, even challenged these norms, with individuals of mainly local ancestry being buried with valuable items, indicating that social status and identity in early medieval Britain were not solely determined by ancestry. This evidence paints a picture of a society where cultural and genetic identities were fluid and constantly evolving as people from different backgrounds came together and formed new communities. The genetic data from early medieval England not only sheds light on the local population, but also reveals the origins of the migrants who arrived on Britain's shores. Using advanced machine learning techniques, researchers were able to trace the likely ancestral homelands of these early settlers. Most of the continental ancestry found in early medieval individuals from England appears to have come from regions spanning the northern Netherlands to southern Sweden, with a significant concentration from areas like Lower Saxony and Germany. This genetic link corresponds closely with the historical accounts of Anglo-Saxon, Jewish, and Frisian migrations, which described waves of settlers arriving from these parts of Northern Europe. Interestingly, while the genetic evidence shows strong ties to Northern Germany and Denmark, the study also uncovered a more modest genetic connection to the Scandinavian peninsula, particularly during the later Viking Age. This suggests that while Scandinavian influence in Britain grew significantly during the Viking period, the early migrations were largely driven by populations from the southern North Sea region. Additionally, the study revealed another surprising element, ancestry linked to Iron Age France, which seems to have arrived in Britain during the early medieval period. This French-related ancestry, dubbed France IA, was particularly prominent in regions like Eastry and Appledown in southern England indicating ongoing interactions with the Frankish territories across the Channel. 
This evidence suggests that migration to Britain was not a single, isolated event, but rather a continuous process of movement and exchange between different parts of Europe. One of the most intriguing aspects of the genetic study is the role that women played in the migration and cultural integration of early medieval Britain. Historical narratives have often focused on male warriors and elites as the primary agents of migration, with the assumption that they imposed their culture on the local population. However, the genetic evidence tells a more complex story. The study found that both men and women were part of the migration waves, and there was no significant difference between male and female ancestry in terms of continental Northern European, CNE, or Western British and Irish, WBI, lineages. This suggests that entire families or communities were migrating, rather than just male elites. Moreover, women with higher CNE ancestry were frequently found buried with valuable grave goods, such as brooches and jewelry, indicating their importance in early medieval society. These grave goods not only reflect the material culture of the time, but also suggest that women played a key role in the transmission of cultural identity. In some cases, these women may have been part of elite families, helping to establish new social hierarchies in post-Roman Britain. Yet, the study also found examples of women with predominantly local WBI ancestry buried with high-status items, further complicating the idea that foreign ancestry automatically conferred higher status. The presence of women in these burial contexts highlights their active participation in the process of migration, settlement, and cultural integration. It also points to a more balanced, community-driven process of change, where both men and women contributed to the evolving cultural landscape of early medieval England. The large-scale migrations and cultural transformations that took place in early medieval Britain have left a lasting genetic legacy in the present-day population. Although the level of continental Northern European ancestry in modern Britons is lower than it was during the early medieval period, it remains a significant part of the genetic makeup of people in southeastern and eastern England. The genetic imprint of the Anglo-Saxon migrations is still detectable in today's population, though it has become diluted over the centuries through subsequent waves of migration and internal mixing. The study also reveals how populations evolve over time, with factors like genetic drift and gene flow influencing the makeup of later generations. Moreover, the cultural legacy of this period is equally profound. The early medieval migrations laid the foundations for the formation of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, which would later unite to form England. The language, social structures, and even place names that emerged during this period continue to shape British identity to this day. The blend of local and continental influences created a new cultural synthesis, which was further enriched by later interactions with the Vikings, Normans, and other groups. Understanding the genetic and cultural history of this period allows us to appreciate the complexity of Britain's past and its role in shaping the modern world. As we continue to explore ancient DNA and other archaeological evidence, we gain a deeper understanding of how migration, integration, and adaptation have been constant themes throughout human history, not just in Britain, but across the globe. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more insightful explorations into history and science. Stay tuned as we continue to uncover the fascinating stories that shaped our world.